We're on the phone today with keyboardist Derek Sherinian. He's played with everybody from Kiss to Whitesnake to Alice Cooper over the years. He's got a new solo album out. It's called Vortex. Hey, Derek, how's it going today? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, thank you for having me. Well, first of all, you've got a new album coming out, a Vortex. Can you tell the listeners a bit about the new album? The new album uh, was uh, co-written and and Simon Phillips on drums played uh, co-wrote the album with me, and he's playing drums, co-produced, co-mixed, and uh, it's pretty much a continuation of our album, The Phoenix, in 2020 except we have some new players on this record. It's the first time uh, Nuno Betancourt, Michael Schenker, and guitarist Mike Stern, first time they've ever joined me on a record. So that's been pretty exciting. And the response so far has been great of the record. Awesome. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about who was uh, playing with you this time around. I know you got a lot of kind of uh, guest artists, but uh, who's playing with you as far as the band goes? Well, Simon Phillips is on drums on every song. And then we have different bass players, uh, mainly Tony Franklin on bass, who's played on all nine of my solo records. And then I have a lot of guitar player guests who have played on a lot of previous records, like Zach Wild, Steve Lukather, Joe Bonamassa, Steve Stevens. And again, Michael Schenker, this is the first time he's played on one of my records. And he had me guest on one of his records in 2020 called Immortal. And so uh, to return the favor, he said that he would play on my record. So I'm very excited to have him. Yeah, that's definitely awesome. And uh, the Rolodex that you've got uh, from working with all these guys over the years, uh, that must come in handy when it's time to hit the studio. It really does. And it's getting bigger and bigger as the years go by. And it's just a, a pleasure to be able to work with all the very best people. Well, Derek, uh, you've been known, I guess, as kind of a shredder on the keyboards maybe for lack of a better term and i know you play some heavy stuff but uh the new album also has a lot of um you know more mellow stuff kind of a jazz fusion uh, sort of thing going on is there a method or or a process i guess you go through to decide you know what kind of mixture or of uh, what you put on the albums is going to be well we want to cover a lot of musical ground and on the last record we played a song called dragonfly which was the first time i ever did piano trio and the response was so great from it that we wanted to keep that tradition going on this record with the song scorpion but i really enjoy uh doing the piano trio format because it forces me to really step up as a piano player and um, i love it and I think that shows a lot for, you know, as far as like heavier music, uh, heavy metal, maybe when you kind of break it down and, you know, all the uh, keyboard stuff that you do and kind of the classical style, it's really fits in uh, well. It's just kind of sped up and a little heavier when it comes down to it. Yeah, for sure. Well, Derek, I know you've uh, played with a lot of other greats over the years. Um, pretty impressive uh, resume. You've got Buddy Miles and Kiss and White Snake. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, your memories working with Alice Cooper and uh, what that was like. I'm, I'm sure an awesome experience. Oh, it was awesome. That was the very first big gig, and that was in October 1989. He had the Trash album out, and everybody in town was trying to get in that band. And so I got an audition from my friend Al Petrelli, who I went to music college with. He was the guitar player and musical director, so he got me an audition, and Alan, Alice gave me the thumbs up. And that was just like the most exciting time of my life, just going on that big tour and being on MTV and getting over that first hump of uncertainty about, is there going to be a career in this music business or is this just a big pipe dream? And so, um, yeah, that was a great, I have great memories. Well, and touring on the uh, trash album, that was really a major comeback for Alice, uh, sort of breathe new life into things for him. And that's oh, a, a, it did. That's a great thing for you to kind of start things off uh, with a huge tour like that. It was fantastic. And, but the, the weird thing is that that was as big of a tour that I've ever been on because that single poison was like a number six on the pop charts. And when you're out on tour with a top 10 uh, pop single, the energy is way different than when you're going out just doing a nostalgia tour. And I found that out pretty quickly, but my very first tour was, was very exciting. And I just am very grateful for that experience. And I know you played on the, the last temptation album, which I love. And 
You were also in Wayne's World. I mean, that's got to be pretty high on the resume, too. No, that was pretty cool. Yeah, no, great memories with Alice. Uh, Great recordings. I'd love to work with them again in the the future. And you were playing, um, I read this on Wikipedia. I don't know how accurate that is all the time, but you played on the the Kiss uh, Revenge Tour. Is that right? That's right. uh, Kiss Alive 3 album was on that tour also. Yeah, that's um, a similar thing to Trash, I guess, uh, with Kiss. Uh, that whole album really kind of uh, brought those guys back onto the mainstream as well. So you definitely had some uh, some pretty awesome at-bats there uh, early on in your career. Absolutely. No, I'm very grateful. It's been great training ground. Well, when you come into a situation like that, is it tough for you to... I guess fit into uh, to the songs that are already there and and not to kind of go uh, off the rails. I mean, obviously you could um, blow everybody away, but uh, you kind of have to stay within the. Uh... No, because you want to keep your job, so you want to play <laughs> the parts and make it sound like the record, you know. And um, that's what solo records are for. So you can go off the rails and not, you know, you have to play for what the music is. You can't just start shredding all over the place. Well, yeah, and it's, uh, as you mentioned, that's what the solo albums are for. The new one, Vortex, is out. Uh, do you have any shows coming up this year, maybe, for the album? Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to probably do more shows next year, but we're starting in, uh, we're doing one show in Ventura, California, on August 29th, and this was Simon Phillips, myself, Bumblefoot, on guitar. And then we're also going to be playing a festival in Armenia, my home country, in September. Wow and September 6th with the same lineup. So, yeah, I'm very excited to go out and play some shows and and promote this record. Excellent. Yeah, that's um, great that things are kind of getting back to normal, you know, well, as normal as it can be, I suppose. Um, getting back onto the road and uh, playing some shows here, it's great things are working out. Yeah, hallelujah to that. <laughs> Well, I know Vortex just out here. Is there anything else maybe in the works for no, you? That's pretty much it. And actually, for Vortex, if you're into instrumental music, if you're into great uh, musicianship, guitar players, keyboard, drumming, you have to get this record. It's top notch, and and uh, I'm really proud of it. Awesome, man. Again, now the new album sounds great, and I, I think a lot of people are going to dig it. And I really appreciate your time. Again, thank you so much. Thanks, Dustin. Take care. Have a great day. And again, that was keyboardist Derek Sherinian, and his new album, Vortex, is available now.